The next segment is going to be about a specific type of uh, text similarity, uh, morphological similarity. We want to be able to identify that two words are morphologically related, and this is typically done uh, through a process named stemming. So words with the same root have usually similar meanings. So for example, the word scan in its base form can also be converted into scans, scanned or scanning, which are different forms of inflection. The first one could be a plural or third person singular verb. Uh, second one is a past tense. The third one is a gerund. It can also add a suffix or an ending like er, which forms a derived word, uh, a noun in this particular case. We can also have derived forms that use prefixes. For example, the verb rescan means to scan something for a second time. And we can have combinations of derived and inflected forms, such as rescan, which has uh, both a prefix for derivation and a suffix for inflection. The process of stemming is to take a word and to convert it into a base form, which is known as the stem, after removing all the different suffixes and endings and sometimes performing some additional transformations. Uh, in practice, the prefixes are often preserved, so rescan will not be stamped to scan. Now let's look at some examples. We want to convert uh, the past tense scan into the base form scan, and we also want to convert uh, the noun indication into the base uh, form of the verb indicate. So this way, if uh, we want to find the similarity between two sentences, we would consider scan and scan to be more similar than two random words and indicate an indication again more similar than uh, any other words. So the method that is used a lot in the natural language community is called Porter's method. It was introduced by Martin Porter in 1980 in a paper called uh, An Algorithm for Suffix Stripping that has been cited more than 7,000 times according to Google Scholar. So this is a pretty fundamental method. Uh, Porter's method is rule-based. It doesn't use any machine learning or training. Uh, it only works for English, and it was generated, uh, all the rules were generated manually. The input of the algorithm is an individual word, such as indicates, and then the output is uh, the stem of that word, which is obtained by performing a series of transformations on the original word. Uh, one caveat is that Porter's stammer uh, sometimes can be wrong, and there are some well-known cases that always have to be fixed in post-processing. Let's look at a few examples of Porter's algorithm. The first example starts with computational and reduces as output the word compute. Now you may say that compute spelled C-O-M-P-U-T is not uh, a word. Uh, if that is correct, it is the stem of the word computational. And we want to be able to take the word computer and produce the same stem, compute, C-O-M-P-U-T. So at the end of the day, computation and computer will be stemmed exactly the same way. So their similarity in the stem space will be uh, perfect. So one of the important aspects of Porter's algorithm is the concept of a measure of a word. So a measure of a word or a string is an indication, a uh, rough indication of the number of syllables in it. It doesn't measure exactly the number of syllables, but it approximates that number. So let's take with a simple word like cat. We're going to think about it as a sequence of vowels and consonants. So the first C is a consonant, the second A is a vowel, the third T is a, uh, is a consonant as well. So we have a C, V, C sequence. If instead we had the word cats, we would still count it as a C, V, C uh, sequence because in Porter's algorithm the number of adjacent consonants doesn't matter and the number of adjacent vowels doesn't matter either. Now uh, the measure of a word tells you how many uh, sequences of VCs we have in the representation. So if you look at the last bullet you can uh, see that any word can be represented as an optional sequence of consonants C followed by any number of VC sequences, followed by an optional V. Or in other words, we can abbreviate the middle portion of VC, VC, dot, 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 to VC uh, with a suffix uh, K, which tells you that VC is repeated K times. So let's look at a few examples of measures. The first line shows you five examples where K is equal to zero. You can see that, for example, uh, the word two 
has the wrong sequence. It has a consonant followed by a vowel and not vowel followed by a consonant. Therefore, it doesn't have a measure of one. It has a measure of zero. The same thing applies to glee, which has, again, a sequence of consonants followed by a sequence of vowels, which, again, uh, matches the pattern for k equals zero. On the next line, we have k equals one. Or is a uh, vowel followed by consonant, so that matches the pattern on the previous slide. East is a sequence of vowels followed by a sequence of consonants, and it matches uh, the pattern as well. The word street starts with an optional consonant and then has a sequence of vowels and a sequence of consonants, so it also, according to the definition on the previous slide, a match uh, k equals 1. And finally, uh, we can have long words with uh, K, 2, 3, and, and larger. Uh, for example, the word easternmost has a measure of 3 because it has a vowel sequence, EA, followed by a consonant sequence, ST, that's the first part of the measure. Then E, followed by RNM, that's the second part. And finally, O, followed by ST, which is the third part. So Porter's algorithm starts by taking the word and checking it against the sequence of transformational patterns in order. Or in other words, this is some sort of a decision list. The rules are ordered. So if you start from the beginning, the first rule, which has a left-hand side that matches your current uh, representation of the word, is going to be applied. And then a certain transformation is going to be made to the current word. So for example, a rule can be of this form. If the measure of the word is greater than zero, Asian should be conflated to eight. So this will take into account uh, the transformation of medication to medicate or dedication to dedicate. However, it's not going to convert nation to nate because uh, the measure of nation is not greater than zero. I should note that uh, the measure is measured only uh, for the portion of the word that is not listed in the pattern. So nation is really n followed by asian. So we want the part on the left hand side n to have a measure greater than zero. And that is not the case. n has a measure of zero. So when a pattern matches, the word is transformed and the algorithm restarts from the beginning of the list of patterns with the newly transformed word. And this is repeated until uh, there are no rules that match in the whole sequence of rules. At that point, the algorithm stops and it outputs the most recently transformed version of the word. So let's look at a more complicated example. The first four lines of the slide show you rules that belong to step 1a of Porter's algorithm. For example, uh, SSES gets transformed to SS at the end of the word. IES gets transformed to I, and so on. Now you ask, for example, why does IES get transformed to I and not, for example, to Y? So, for example, if a word is weakly, its plural is weeklies, IES, we want those two forms, weekly singular and weekly plural, to both be stemmed the same way. So this conversion to LI takes that into account. So it would convert IES to I and Y with a separate row that is not shown here also to I. So both words will be stamped to weekly, W-E-E-K-L-I. Now, step 1b includes rules of this form. If the measure is greater than zero, then perform a certain type of transformation. So refereed changes to referee because the measure of refer is greater than zero. But it, this rule doesn't apply to bleed because the measure of BL is zero. Now, some of the rules in step two. Ational becomes eight. For example, inflational turns into inflate. If ational doesn't match, but T-I-O-N-A-L matches, then that gets converted to T-I-O-N. You can see that the order of the rules really matters because if we had the rule for T-I-O-N-A-L first and then ational, obviously the second rule would never apply. Here, we're essentially taking care of the special case ational. And then if the word doesn't match that pattern, then only do we go to the next pattern, T-I-O-N-A-L. And you should be able to look at the rest of the examples on this slide and uh, figure out what kind of words uh, they apply to. So evenness gets converted to I-V-E. So for example, forgiveness would turn into forgive, attentiveness to attentive, and so on. Step three includes more rules. Uh, let's look at a few examples. Ikate 
turns into IC, so replicate becomes replique. Ative becomes blank. That's what this slash zero or phi symbol means. So, for example, informative gets turned into inform. So, in step four, we have uh, other endings. So, for example, al at the end of a word typically indicates a specific type of noun or adjective, and it can be skipped. So, appraisal becomes appraise. Ands, as in conductance, it can also be skipped. So, that turns conductance into conduct. Uh, the next rule is about er at the end, which again, for words of a sufficient length, measure greater than one, if it applies, uh, it will remove the suffix er altogether. So container will be changed to contain. Let's now look at the long word that will need to go through the list of rules multiple times before it gets stamped completely. So if the word is computational, we're going to start from the first row in the list and we'll find the first matching pattern as part of step two, and that tells us to replace ational with eight. So we're going to change computational to computate, which is not a word, but we don't care about this because we're still not done with the stemming process. Instead, what we want is to go back to the beginning of the list of rows and look for a row that matches computate. Well, there is such a row. If the measure is longer than a certain number, we can replace the final eight with blank and get compute. C-O-M-P-U-T out of computate. At this point, we go back to the beginning of the list of rules and we realize that there are no other rules that apply and we stop here and produce compute as the step. The second example is uh, simpler. The word computer only matches a specific rule that is part of step four of the Porter stammer and that tells us to drop the final E-R and get compute, C-O-M-P-U-T, the same as for computational. And this is really the lesson to learn here. We wanted those two words to stand to the exact same representation and Porter's algorithm makes sure that they do. If you're interested in Porter's algorithm in more detail, I suggest that you go to this website here on top, which has an online demo of the algorithm. You can type any text and uh, get an output from it. You can also read the original paper by Martin Porter and I download implementations of Porter's algorithm in many different programming languages such as Python, C++, Java, and so on. And one uh, additional link that is not showing here is the Natural Language Toolkit, which I've mentioned elsewhere, which also contains an implementation of the Porter algorithm. So uh, let's uh, have a short quiz now. Uh, I want to give you four words, construction, increasing, unexplained and differentiable. I want you to take a minute and look at the original Porter paper or possibly the code of the stammer itself and figure out what the output should be. Uh, you can do this either by running the code or by uh, tracing it uh, manually. Look at the output that you get and think whether that is what you expected and if not, try to think why. I'm going to give you an answer on the next slide. So the question was to find uh, how the Porter stammer stems uh, the words construction, increasing, unexplained, and differentiable. Well, here's what it does. It converts construction to construct, which is a good stem, increasing to increase without the E, which again is a good stem because the final E in the verb increase is not part of the stem. Unexplained becomes unexplained. So this may be uh, different from what you would expect. You may expect that uh, you would get explain as the stem, but as I mentioned earlier, Porter's algorithm explicitly does not take into account prefixes. It only removes uh, characters from the end of the word. And finally, differentiable turns into differenti, which is probably not the stem that you expected. And I would classify this example as one of the places where Porter's algorithm falls short. Now, there was a poem in NACLO in uh, 2008 uh, by Eric Breck on uh, stemming. When you have a minute, please download this problem and try to solve it at home. Uh, the solution to the thorny stems problem by Eric Breck is available at this URL. Uh, if you try to solve it yourselves, you can check your solution now. So in the next segment, we're going to talk about another type of uh, uh, lexical similarity, specifically the concept of edit distance and the dynamic uh, programming methods that are used to compute edit distance.